I'm Jessica, and this is the first part in a series about PRT, or Personal Rapid Transit. And today we're just going <coughs> to, excuse me, we're just going to learn some of the basics about PRT from PRT guru Peter Muller, who I'm with here today. And we're just going to go over some of the definitions of PRT, look at some different types of systems, and look at some vi visualizations. Um, so is there just a basic definition of PRT? Yeah, Jessica, actually there is. The Advanced Transit Association has a definition of PRT, which I subscribe to. It's pretty good. And uh, there are five categories they discuss. Uh, first of all, what it is is driverless vehicles or automated vehicles that run on a guideway. Um, these vehicles are very small, so it's kind of automobile-sized vehicles. They carry one to four, maybe on some systems, up to six passengers and their luggage. Um, and they go direct from origin to destination non-stop. You never have to stop and you never have to transfer. The service is there when you need it. It's on demand. Um, it's not on a schedule, so it's kind of unusual for transit. You actually have vehicles typically that are waiting for you rather than you waiting for the transit. These vehicles are, are small and so in order to get enough capacity, they operate on very small headways, very short time between vehicles, as, as short as one or two seconds. So there are three basic types of PRT. The first is what's called open guideway, uh, which is very much like a car with rubber tires, uh, battery powered. Um, the second is captive bogey, and if you look at the picture, you can see the, the um, wheels are actually inside the guideway. So the guideway steers the, the vehicle and tells it where to go, and it can't leave the guideway in any way. This type usually gets their electric power from a third rail on the guideway. The final type is suspended, where it's hanging kind of like a gondola. So now we're going to look at a little visualization which shows how PRT compares to conventional transit. On the left you have personal rapid transit, on the right think of it as a bus or a uh, light rail or an airport automated people mover or something like that. We've got the same number of people coming in on the left as come in on the right. So um, here you see one person coming in on the left and one person coming in on the right. The difference is on the left People get picked up immediately. On the right, they have to stand around and wait. Now, one of the things you'll notice is when the vehicle's in the station, other vehicles can go by. So the stations are what's called offline. They're off the main line. They don't have to go through every stop along the way. Yeah, there you see a vehicle going by. That you don't stop at other people's stops. You only stop at your stop. Now, as you can see here, sometimes people come in and they do have to wait. Typically, even in rush hour, your wait will be a minute or less. Yeah, that's a lot better than the 15 minutes to half hour you usually have to wait. No kidding. So, one of the things um, that some PRT systems can do better than others is not only have the stations offline to the guideway, but also have the station bays offline to each other. So, um, here you'll see uh, a vehicle comes in, and this guy doesn't know that he has to press the go button in the vehicle to make it actually leave the station. So it just sits there, and the system just operates around him without any detriment except a little bit of a loss of capacity. So if all the people on the right are still waiting, I know I'd be pretty mad, so why are they still smiling? Oh yeah, good point. Really, in reality, they probably wouldn't be smiling for much longer. Yeah. So when transit comes, you can see it's multicolored because it has to stop at every station that anybody else wants to stop at. Now we're, we're going to um, look at a little movie uh, um, showing some PRT systems. And uh, this starts off with a, a system called Vectus, which is... Uh, Vectus is a company owned by POSCO, one of the largest steel manufacturers in Korea. And uh, Vectus is actually a British company, though, and they have a test track in Sweden. So it's kind of weird the way uh, there are three countries involved with this system. But here you see a gentleman getting on the, the vehicle. Uh, 
uh, he selects, he closes the door and then he selects the station which he's going to. Now in some vehicles you'll actually select the station before you get on the vehicle, but in practice you're selecting the station while you're in the vehicle. Then as it goes off, he's got this neat little kiosk that he can do things to, like listen to music. Uh, I guess potentially he could even be on the internet. Here you see three vehicles going off at short headways. They're about three seconds apart. Here you see a system operating in the snow. Now we switch to a different system. This is a British system called Ultra. It's currently under construction at Heathrow and um, is undergoing testing at this time uh, and will be running carrying passengers later this year. I will be uh, inspecting this system next week in London and we'll be making a, a little video of that, which I hope to upload and have available to you next week. Here again, you see the stations are offline in, in a similar configuration to what you saw on the Vectus system. Other vehicles going by. Here you see their kiosk is on the station outside the vehicle, so you choose your, your station before you get in the vehicle. Here you see it actually operating inside a building. These vehicles are so light that they can run on building floors. As long as the building is designed to code, they can pretty much handle them. That's cool. Yeah. Here you see a more complicated station where the vehicles are staggered um, in a sawtooth arrangement so you can get more vehicles in and out. More independent. More independent, other. yeah. The vehicle bays are independent to each other. Here you see a kid choosing the, the destination. <laughs> the family gets on board, notice, roll on, roll off. And the kid's driving, and there he just drove. That's all there is to it. Now, this is an American system. This is called uh, Taxi 2000 or Skyweb Express. It's a system being developed in Minnesota. This visualization shows merging um, of two guideways. Here we're back to the Ultra system, and this shows uh, their mock-up of how the Heathrow stations that I'm going to see next week will work. And here you see multiple operations in and out of a station where again you have independent um, station bays that are offline to each other. So they've already proven that they can do this. And like I said, it's under testing at Heathrow. I hope to upload a video next week. All right, well, thank you for your time today. That was very informative. And you can follow Peter's tweets um, at Twitter at PRTGuru, or you can email him at info at PRTConsulting.com or they have a very cool website. I've been on it before, very easy to use, very informative. And that's just www.prtconsulting.com. And we hope to see you soon. So long.